Okay, I'm going to cover some hints and tricks and stuff that will hopefully help you now that you're about all started on the helicopter. I went through and I uh, dumped out the scrap bins and I pulled out the material in the scrap bins um, that has been left over from helicopters. And I was pretty impressed with the amount of material in that. Now, most of this is, uh, this is from three periods of classes, um, but I wanted to show you some of this material and talk about um, maybe how we're doing it. So I have a whole bunch of little things I'm going to write down for you. So the first thing is um, picking out your material. Some of you guys have been really good at this and some of you are not so good. But if you pick out material that is... Pick out wood that means something. What in the world does that mean? So if you pick up a general piece of wood, something like this, and you look at it, does it have any interest? Is there anything that says, you know what, I kind of like that? We have a lot of material out there. And if you just go grab any random piece, you're actually not going to care about your project as much. So when you pick something that you look at it and you say, um, I actually like the color, a little bit of red color. And when you stain it, it's actually going to come out a little bit more. Picking something that you say, you know what, I can buy into this, it's going to mean something, is actually a lot more important than just going and getting a project that doesn't uh, mean anything to you. So finding a piece that has some grain in it, um, either some dark wood or something that has uh, design in it. I have a lot of students that find the part where the grain turns the corner right there, and they like to line that up with the front of their helicopter so it matches. Um, that's pretty cool if you can do that. Uh, here's a piece of Madrone. Um, I used to live on Madrona Court, and so uh, you know, finding something that you can relate to and say, oh, you know what, that's going to mean something to you. If, it, if you do, you're going to actually invest in your project that much more. And I know that's kind of stupid and it's kind of low level, but it actually does work. If you find something you're interested in, you're going to put more time into it, your grade's going to turn out better. Um, finding something with, uh, like even something like this, this is a knot hole. And some people will try and cut away from the knot hole, and I've got other students that really like the character, the figure around a knot. So they'll line it up right with their helicopter, right where the uh, cockpit hole is gonna be. And so they're gonna see that grain in there, um, and it looks like the whole, the, so they're gonna drill a hole right there, but it looks like all the rest of the wood is is conforming around that. So when you look at the helicopter, it looks like that cockpit hole was supposed to be in there. So uh, finding something that you can uh, make it a little bit more interesting. Um, the next one, this is the one that, uh, the reason that started this whole thing is, Center of your board. So I've caught this probably uh, six or seven times now, and thankfully it hasn't been our class. But um, if you put something right here and then you cut it out, you're doing three things. One, you guys can all see this, all of this wood may or may not get used. But the most important part, the thing that I think is most important to you guys, is if I put it down here right near the edge, I actually have a lot less work to do because I don't even have to cut along the bottom side. That part's already done for me. I don't even have to cut on the bandsaw. This is going to be four times faster if I put it down here because the bottom side's already cut. All I have to do is cut across here with the bandsaw and then I can start cutting everything out. Anybody that puts it out here, they have to do this big loop around and then they have to decide if they have to come <coughs> off and then cut around here and then they start cutting their piece out. So when you put it down against the edge, it's actually a lot faster and a lot easier for you. And the best thing about it is you're saving a lot of material, right? But when you put it down here in the center, it actually takes more time to cut out. Also, if you're cutting it out of a piece this big, if you just take it over to the bandsaw, 
while it's still thick, and you cut down right here, take the bandsaw and cut it right here. Now you only have to plane this little bit. It goes through the planer easier, it doesn't make as much noise, and you don't have as much to take off. Does that make sense? So if you have a really big board and you're gonna share it with somebody, you can still save a lot of material by cutting down at an, uh, right next to your design and then just playing that. Um, so I found a few of these in the scrap bin. Uh, I'm not sure how many I found. Um, here's another one. They obviously didn't plane it down to the right thickness first, right? Didn't get down to three fourths. And also, they did it cross grain, so the grain is going this direction. What do you think is going to happen if they set it down right here a little too hard? Yeah, it's going to break apart. It's going to snap right across that grain line. So making sure it's going the right direction on there. Um, but again, all these pieces that were in the scrap bin are going to fit another piece. So when you get done with your piece, if it's still good, you can be, I, I don't know how many people I found, but most of them, you could fit the side piece of another helicopter. So this one would work. Um, this one would work for a side piece. This one you could fit. Uh, that'd be tight. It might work. You might be able to get a third one on there. Um, so pretty much all these pieces that I found in there that I pulled out, the reason I pulled them out is so people understand that we're throwing away a lot of money when we check this in there. Um, this is material I had to drive across. So first of all, a company donated this to us over in Woodstock, the joinery in Portland. And then, um, so I had to drive over there and pick this all up. And uh, it's it's quite an ordeal to take that size of a truck over there. It's an hour and a quarter drive every time. So when you go through material, try and think about how much we're, uh, how much money we're throwing away when we do that. Um, sticky tape. Buy double sticky stick. I said that right, right? Double stick, stick is stick. You can actually buy it. You have to order it online, and it comes in rolls usually of like ten rolls, and they are about four times more expensive than regular tape. So when you are using that double sticky tape, you just want two small pieces, and then whatever you do, make sure it does not. not double up. If it pulls even a little bit, if you get just a little bit of a bump on that sticky tape, the next piece, when you push your board down on it, it's going to be up and it's going to rock on that. And it won't compress. And all that sticky tape is going to go to waste because it's got a little gap in there. So make sure that double sticky tape is not doubled up. Um, Next thing is, uh, so all this material I poured out that I pulled out, what usually happens is a student will go over and it's really hard to find a piece of wood and so they'll grab something like this. But me, when I walk over there, because I know what I'm looking for, I'm gonna find the smallest board. I just went out there and picked this board up. This board's been out there this whole time and it's probably one of the prettiest boards out there, at least considered to me, just because of the red in it. There's not much red wood out there. And this fits perfectly that pattern, okay? So this has been sitting out there, but nobody picked it up because their first automatic is, I don't know if I can make that work, and so they don't try. But this is actually gonna save me the most money because it just barely fits, and so I don't have to waste much material. Whereas this, is three times the size, and I'm only gonna use just a very small portion of it. And besides, this one has uh, that color that I like. So when you're finding a piece of material out there, like this right here, it's like perfect for doing your project, right? You're gonna have to make it, uh, look at that. You can just make that work. So finding a board, there we go. Finding a board that works, um, that smaller is always going to make money. When you find a big board, you cut it down. Um, so,
Okay, almost done. Um, Sanders. Use the belt sander whenever possible. What is the spindle sander for? Anybody remember what the spindle sander is for? Just a little bit of round spot. So if this was my helicopter and I was building my helicopter, I would use the spindle sander three times on here. I'd use the spindle sander right here, I'd use it right here, and I'd use it right here. Everywhere else, where am I going to use? Belt sander. The spindle sander does not take off very much material at all. It's really small, and as many times it goes around, it packs up the material real fast on there. So when you're trying to sand, it's like, man, it's not sanding anything. It's not supposed to. You're supposed to, exactly, use the bandsaw first to cut, cut as close as you can, and then you move on to the belt sander. Um, when you have something like this, when you're using the smaller one, guess how much you have to use the spindle sander on this one? Not a single bit. <coughs> if I was to sand this down, I would be done with my project on the belt sander within probably, if I cut it right on the bandsaw, it will take me probably two minutes to sand this completely and I'll be done on the belt sander. If I go to the spindle sander, guess how long this would take? Okay. By about Christmas time, I'll probably be about there. So. A lot of people feel safer on the spindle sander because it's so small and they can sit there and then this line grows behind them. If there is a line behind you, you're doing it wrong. It means you're in the wrong spot. You need to go over to the belt sander and take it off first, okay? You don't even need to use a spindle sander on this one. Everything you can hit. This, this design right here, this angle, guess what it matches? Yeah, the end of that belt sander right there. It's the exact same angle. So when you go around to start sanding yours out, um, you'll spend a lot less time and your project will turn out a lot better if you use that belt sander. Um, that they'll get this cut out and they're like, all right, I'm ready to double sticky tape. And so they double stick, sticky tape the stuff on the side of it. Um, I don't have a, um, they double sticky tape it on the side. By the way, what could they do with this one? I found it in scrap metal. So that's exactly right. It could be the piece on the side. You don't have just to throw it away. This would be the perfect side piece for that person. They didn't have to get rid of that. Um, so when you are doing this, uh, what was I talking about? Um, the bandsaw mark. So when you get done with it, you're going to come up to me and say, all right, what's next? And I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to, can you guys see those bandsaw marks from where you are back there? I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to say, hey, you need to sand those marks out a little bit. You, you, this is what happens every time. I've been sanding that for hours. And I'll say, on what? And I'll say, the spindle sander. And I'll smile very sweet. So when you are sanding, it is going to take hours if you are using the wrong machine. And also, if they're really deep, what can I do if they're really deep, if the mark is really deep? What machine can I go back to? I can go back to the bandsaw and then feather it so it's not so deep. And then when I go to the sander, it doesn't take very long. So watch out for that. By the way, a lot of people have been marking this little hole right here. You know what that hole is for? You see it up on the wall? That's where you hang it by. It has nothing to do with your project. Don't trace that little circle out right there. It looks kind of cool, but it doesn't do anything except hang it on the wall. Um, you're just tracing the outside of it. 